dual threat. In fact, they had him even lining up third down gambles or short yardage situations earlier this year. And there he goes again. Brandon Whitaker now inside the 25 yard line. And as Brandon Whitaker goes, so go the Alouettes. Keep in mind, he did not play against the Argos in their last meeting. No, and of course, one of their key weapons, he's a guy who's going to make life easier. Watch big number 54, Jeff Parrott, get out in front of him. He seals out Jamie Robinson, creates that inside run lane for Brandon Whitaker to turn it up. Another first down for the Alouettes here. Tight formation for Marsh. Mark south the signals. Now Arlan Bruce takes it in the former Argo. Alonzo Lawrence. It lays into him. Might have lost a yard just back to the line of scrimmage for Arlan Bruce coming off a monster game against the BC Lions. Uh, second carry of the game for Arlan Bruce as the Alouettes try through a few different tactics to get that run game going. Just something ultimately that'll take a little bit of pressure off young Tanner Marsh. Arlan joked with me yesterday, said he's collecting jerseys. He's been to a lot of different cities, loves it in Montreal. Five receivers, but Marsh calls his own number and there's a face mask call coming right here. Khalif Mitchell got his hand up in the grill of Tanner Marsh. Khalif may celebrate right now, but he's not going to be happy when he hears the call. Another guy who wears his emotions rather proudly is Khalif Mitchell. And Mitchell made a diving effort to get to Marsh as he bursts up the middle on that quarterback draw. It looked like he got the left hand up on the face mask. Major foul, face mask, Toronto, number 96. Major foul, horse collar tackle, Toronto, number 39. Both penalties will be enforced, first down. Wow, you don't see that too often, a face mask and then a horse collar on the way down. Double whammy here. Right down to the six yard line. Here it is again. Here's one. Left hand up on the face mask. I'm not sure where the horse collar came in. I believe he's a little hot under his own collar right now. Alouettes immediately to the red zone. Brandon Whitaker goes forward. And Argos say the ball was fumbled. They have the football. There is no signal from the officials right now as to who has possession but the whistle had clearly blown Ivan Brown comes up with it it's going to be second down here Scott Milanovic has thrown the challenge flag We'll take a closer look ourselves. Now the ball is Whitaker's still up, still up, still up. And he still has the ball tucked under his arm. Look at Khalif Mitchell without the helmet in that scrum. Now the ball comes out before Whitaker is actually down because he's got players underneath them. So he hasn't no part of him other than hands or feet had touched the field at that point. The question rod is had the whistle gone. The premise that his forward progress had been stopped, whether he had hit the ground or not. So Scott Milanovic throws the challenge flag here early in this second quarter. His team leading 8-0. Milanovic, of course, was the former offensive coordinator with the Montreal Alouettes and one-time quarterback coach hired by Jim Pop. Then came to Toronto, and the rest is history. Coach of the year, Grey Cup champion. The ruling on the field was forward progress had been stopped before the ball had come out. Therefore, this play is not challengeable. That information was not known to the Toronto coach. He will not be charged his challenge. So 
Scott disagrees. Yeah, once the whistle blows, regardless of anything else, once the whistle blows, the play is dead. The whistle was blown here, not because he was down, but because forward progress had been stopped. Let's see the Alouettes front line trying to help Brandon Whitaker along. Whitaker's back there again with Tanner Marsh. Second and goal. Marsh wants to throw. He does into the end zone, and S.J. Green can't come up with it. Uh, this is one where the young quarterback just got a little excited. He's got to get that ball up in the air a bit. Make it an easier catch for S.J. Green. Marsh already sporting a nose plug here. This one a little low. S.J. Green can't bring it in. So it will bring out Sean White to put the Alouettes on the board here. White, the game-winning field goal against the Lions in the comeback. This one a chip shot, easily done, straight through. Al's are on the board, 8-3, but they much rather would have had a touchdown here in Toronto tonight. Well, some people grew up dreaming about becoming football players and others dream of becoming astronauts. Like Chris Hadfield did. Recently back home after a year-long mission in outer space. True Canadian hero. He's here tonight. He's with Matthew Shinnity. Guys, I am standing beside Commander Hatfield, who has been places and done things we may never, ever, ever do. And Commander, but I'm standing beside you, and you're just so immersed in this football game. It's been a while since I was at a game. I've been busy. I've been away. It's uh, nice to be here. Uh, talk, take us through your memories of, because you've been in the States for a long time. When was the last time you've been to an Argo game? And what are your memories of it? <laughs> it's, it's so long. It was actually an exhibition stadium last time I saw them play. So, and I was sitting in terrible seats. I was way up where the wind was blowing louder than the announcer. But, but it's great to have a chance to come back and see them play here tonight. And, and also with the way they're playing, it's, it's great to be back in Toronto and, and to watch them play tonight live. We've uh, seen what you can do with a hockey puck in space. Take us through some of the difficulties, perhaps, of playing football in the space station. Well, a spiral would be important, just for the aerodynamics, but the ball wouldn't drop. So you could throw it deadly slow. You could just spin it and just touch it, and the ball would then go the whole length of the space station. Be a whole different game. And tackle, tackle would be different. <laughs> Absolute pleasure, Commander. Thank you. Nice to be talking to you. Thanks. Commander Chris Hatfield. See, I don't think you'd have a problem being in the nose points in any stadium. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Monster Bay. No, it's that he, he lives up there. But I, I've got a man that uh, the world followed. It wasn't that cool in outer space. Every single day he had something unique uh, from his space station. Hockey pucks. They love the seat of football. There he is, taking in the game tonight. Ontario native commander Chris Hatfield. Great to have him here. Polaris now, flag flies. Procedure, Toronto, number 87. Five-year penalty, speed second down. Well, the tight end, Xander Robinson, usually the guy who's in to do some blocking. But with two touchdown receptions already this year among his three catches. Got a little excited and jumped early there. So reset it to second and nine. Eight three Argos. It's a rematch of earlier in the season, second meeting. The two teams back at it next week in Montreal. Polaris now. There he goes, and down he goes. Brought down from behind, Chip Cox, but a penalty flag at the 21. Oh, much bigger concern than the penalty. It's the health of Zach Kolaris. It looked like he might have gotten that left knee caught as he was pulled down from behind. Major foul. Montreal, number 11, head tackle. First down. Let's take a look at this again. Well, Chip Cox comes off the edge initially, and he's going to be the man in pursuit. He goes high. There's another Alouette defender. Watch the knee, though, here. Get twisted. Actually, they're working on the shoulder of Kolaris. Trevor Harris will come into the game. 
one time he was the heir apparent second string behind a Ricky Ray. Polaris though taking over and he'll go to the sideline shortly. Trevor Harris is coming in here. The good news is Zach Polaris just ran off the field but we're going to get an update shortly on what appears to be a shoulder injury. That left shoulder he grabbed his left arm immediately you'll see as he rolls over here clearly an awkward landing as he was brought down by Cox and Alan Michael Cash on the play. Well, already one quarterback down in the Argo ranks. Future Hall of Famer Ricky Ray with a shoulder injury. Curtis Steele takes the handoff and goes nowhere. Let's revisit Ricky Ray's injury. Well, last game for the Toronto Argonauts against the Calgary Stampeders. Charleston Hughes with the hit from behind. Lands on top of the Argo quarterback. He had that arm extended, right throwing arm. It's led to a slight tear of a muscle in his shoulder. Similar kind of plays, though. Players pursuing a quarterback from behind. Harris. Ball was errant, off target. Dontrell Inman was the intended target, and so the Argos will have to give it back to Montreal. Tough spot here for Trevor Harris as well. Well, tr Trevor Harris got welcomed into the game by free safety Mike Edom and Will Linebacker. Marco Briette, both those guys going to come free off the bottom edge on that blitz and arrive at the quarterback simultaneously. Prefontaine from his 30. Is it hop again? Now reverses field. Penalty flag down. Let's sort it out when we come back. The Alouettes within five here tonight. And might we see former Argo a little more here tonight? Arlan Bruce on the loose again. This time in Montreal Colors. The CFL on TSN will continue. The guy who calls himself Renaco Reth, Arlan Bruce back in Toronto. Well, well-traveled, as you mentioned, but his best years came with the Toronto Argonauts. Very prolific time in double blue. Over 300 catches. Tanner Marsh going deep. And it is caught by S.J. Green. This time will hang on and does not have it punched out. A 19 on 19 matchup. Jalil Carter shadowing SJ Green, who somehow came down with that. Well, we've seen SJ Green do it before. The circus catch one on one versus Jalil Carter. Nice release move with the hands, a little quick swim over the top. Great concentration with the defender right on him. SJ Green. Already over the century mark. We're not even at halftime yet. Eight minutes to go. Alouettes marching here. Brandon Whitaker. Another spin move. Picks up half the first down yardage. Maybe slightly less than that. The young gun, Tanner Marsh. Carrollton, Texas. Said yesterday it was a funny reaction when he first was throwing with Anthony Calvillo. He said he was scared to death at training camp when they were playing catch. He didn't want to jam his thumb. <laughs> but, and it was neat because he actually knew a fair bit about Calvillo because he was working out in the offseason with Josh Nicewander, the Owls' other quarterback, who had told him lots about the veteran starter. Marsh, good dodge there. Now has to escape and is going nowhere. Now he goes again. Marcus Ball on top of him. And there's a penalty flag. But it was way downfield. This could be an interference call down near the 11 yard line. Will this be a Toronto sack or will this be a Toronto penalty? Illegal contact on a receiver. Toronto, number 19. 10 yard penalty becomes first down. That's 19 versus 19. Jalil Carter going up against S.J. Green. Remember, Green got that great release move with the quick swim on the hands. So Carter's probably thinking this time, I want to make sure I get my hands on him 
and don't let him run free. That time, a little hook around the hips. Brings Green down and draws the flag. First and 10 again for the Alouettes. Number 30. And they first just past center. And Brandon Whitaker with a another crash into that Toronto scrum. Two yard pickup. Well, Shane Horton, number 27, the man who stepped up with the tackle. Guy who's been part of that defensive rotation. Certainly productive when he's been healthy for the Argonauts. Now barks out the signals. Here comes the rush again. He has to go up the middle. He goes to the end zone and it is caught. Touchdown, Arlan Bruce. Gutsy throw from Tanner Marsh. Back in his old haunt, Arlan Bruce. Longtime Argo. Went to BC, of course, won a great cup with the Lions, helped them along, and has really come alive in the last couple of weeks. More involved in this offense, and this is what he does best. Finds an opening, gets in the end zone. A uh, very narrow window there for Tanner Marsh. Marcus Ball bearing down on him. Arlen Bruce in tight coverage. Got it done. So the Alouettes now have their first lead. Welcome back to T.O. Arlan Bruce. It's his first touchdown as an Alouette. Oh, we saw a couple of gutsy throws from Tanner Marsh on this drive. The bomb to S.J. Green where he took a big hit. And this one, where he got hit just as he threw that football. Marcus Ball came in from the side to deliver the blow. Tanner Marsh delivers. Now 7 of 10, 162 with a touchdown. Harlan Bruce coming off a 167-yard night against BC. So he's taken a shot, a couple of shots, one to the nose. But that's the kind of guy he is. And, and when you sit down and talk with him as we did yesterday, you get a sense. Like, even if he wasn't, didn't have pads on, he'd be playing, like, touch football somewhere. <laughs> and he'd still have that nose plug in there. Yeah, well, and I, I would say the same thing about both Zach Kolaris and Tanner Marsh is that there's, there's a little bit of swagger there, a lot of confidence, but not cockiness. Chad Owens, trouble with that kick. Now nowhere to go, and he is down at the five-yard line. And... Zach Kolaris is coming back in the ballgame. Here's Matt. Guys.